How's it chaps and welcome back to another episode of Burton Builds. Today we are not building anything but we are just going to have a quick look at this. It's uh, Rode's new wireless go wireless microphone basically. Uh, transmitter and receiver um, and also we're going to have a look at the SC3. Uh, that's a little adapter that I bought so that I can use my lavalier microphones with, uh, with the setup. So let's get into it. thing is quite tough to open <laughs> come on I'm pretty sure this box is supposed to slide out the bottom here oh there we go there we go so first things first uh, the packaging is actually quite nice um, like a lot of the road stuff is although i say that but uh, this is like only the fourth or fifth road product that i bought uh, but quite a nice little box specs are on the back um, and the box has got a nice little kind of tearing piece in the front here so ah first thing we are greeted with is a quick start guide and that's part of the actual packaging itself and uh, in the box is the two well, not two receivers, but the uh, receiver and the transmitter. Now, these things are pretty damn small. Uh, I think we actually have to take the box out. It's like a box within a box within a box. <laughs> a lot of packaging. The first things that I see here is uh, the transmitter and receiver. So, that's these two little pieces here. Now, having a closer look at them, you can see they are very, very small and they look almost identical uh, we'll have a look at these again uh, shortly you also get two cables uh, that's the charging cables these things here and uh, they are usb a to usb c um, so one for each one for each unit also you get these little dead cat windshield things this is a i don't know what that is really it's just a little bit of fur um, I have read a couple of reviews, uh, watched a couple of videos, and these things, well, uh, they, they're meant for wind to take away, uh, well, to reduce a little bit of wind noise, but um, they tend to fall off the microphones really easily, so don't lose those. Uh, you also get a little 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter TRS cable. Um, that's quite neat. One of these little dry packs, and uh, another little road paperwork thingamajig. I uh, don't think we really need that. And this is quite neat. Uh, also a little neoprene case. So it's quite nice to store your receiver and transmitter and all the cables and everything in. It's got a uh, nice road branding over there. A um, little bit of Velcro, basic neoprene case. First impressions on, on this product. Now road products are normally pretty well built. They are designed and manufactured in Australia. Uh, if that's something that is important to you, well there it is. Let's have a look at the two units. Uh, we've got the transmitter over here and the receiver over here. Uh, on the face of the uh, transmitter we've got two lights. Now one of them is the power LED and that's on the right hand side and the link LED is on the left hand side. Uh, on the top of the unit We've got uh, the built-in microphone. Now that's the omnidirectional microphone. And then we've also got the three and a half millimeter TRS input. That's for your lav mic or any, any external mic really. Uh, on the bottom of the unit, we've got a power button. On the, which, what would this be, the right hand side, we've got a USB-C charging port. And that is about it. <laughs> Quite a simple little unit. As for the receiver now, this one has got a small screen on it, so uh, you can see as I'm talking, um, because these two are now connected, um, you can see the little kind of the, the audio input level over there as I talk, and uh, that is quite a nice little feature so that you can actually see that the mic is, is working. On the top left hand corner you've got the RX which is the receiver battery, um, on the top right hand corner you've got the TX which is the transmitter battery. Bottom right, you've got a little kind of Wi-Fi signal that shows you your signal strength. Now as the signal strength drops, that little, um, that little uh, sort of signal strength indicator also drops. And then you've got your 
uh, audio output settings, the minus 12, minus 6, and 0 dB. Uh, now, you can change that by pushing the little buttons on the bottom. And he has the dB button on the bottom, and he has the link uh, button. That's just to link it to a transmitter. So we can cycle through. Now let's have a look at this. I'm going to cycle from, uh, I think we had minus 12 dB now. Then we'll go to minus 6 dB, and then we'll go to 0 dB. Of course, that's not the audio that you're hearing at the moment. Uh, that's just uh, the audio, or that's just the little indication you're seeing on this spare unit that I've got. Uh, the little sun at the top middle, maybe that's because it's sunny outside. <laughs> Guys, I actually don't know. Uh, I need to read the manual. Uh, on the, what would this be, the left-hand side, the left-hand side, it's got the audio output jack, that's the 3.5mm TRS output, and it's also got the USB-C charging port. Um, on the top is the power button, and that is about it. A little bit about these things, uh, some of the important specs. Now, they don't have uh, interchangeable batteries like the Filmmaker Video Kit does. Uh, these have got built-in lithium ion rechargeable batteries and road claims they last about seven hours i'm going to guess they will probably last anywhere from uh, five to seven hours uh, but i think that depends on a couple of factors uh, one of them being the output um, that's you know whatever output you've got it set on and also whether it's having to work hard to jump between frequencies or transmit very long ranges uh, that's at a guess i'm not an expert on that type of thing so uh, approximately seven hours. It also works on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency band, so that's quite a congested band with a lot of Wi-Fi Wi-Fi signals. But uh, Rode do say that it's designed uh, very well. It's a very robust design in the 2.4 gigahertz category um, or, or range that uh, you shouldn't get any interference. Uh, they also use 128-bit encryption uh, to encrypt your audio or the audio transmission. Another important thing, actually, that I've seen uh, with some of the sort of less lesser known brands, <laughs> the cheaper brands, is the latency. So um, I've noticed this. I used to do quite a bit of filming with my GoPro, and uh, that's got that little kind of black audio box thing that you plug into the side, and then you plug a microphone into that. And that has got quite a fair amount of latency. Now, the latency is um, you, you'll quite easily see this when you're talking and the audio doesn't match up or sync up with uh, the actual lip movements. Um, so Rode claim that these, well, geez, that <laughs> these two units have got, uh, well, this, this set has got a latency of six milliseconds. So that is actually pretty damn good. Um, I think that's actually good enough to just stick straight into a post-production and you don't have to sync up audio and video. That is another reason why I've gone with the system. One of the features that I like about this setup is that the transmitter has actually got a built-in microphone right into the top of the, the actual casing. So um, for a real, real run-and-gun type style, which is what everybody... Yeah, I kind of hate that saying, run-and-gun, but everybody's using it. Um, but if you really quickly need to mark up somebody uh, at a show or if you're doing a really quick and fast uh, interview, then uh, you can clip this onto kind of, you know... You just clip it, well, not quite like that, but uh, you clip it on, and uh, then this microphone does a really good job of picking up the, picking up the audio. Uh, you can also plug in a lavalier microphone. Now, that uses a TRS 3.5mm uh, jack connection. Uh, that's actually what I'm busy using at the moment. So, I've got my lav over here, and uh, just to prove it, I've got two of these things. So, <laughs> there we go. There's the uh, the second unit. Now, of course, this is the transmitter. The receiver is plugged into the camera, and uh, that's what the audio sounds like. So, I reckon it works pretty damn well. What do you guys think of the audio? Let me know in the comments. Also, something for those of you that are wondering, uh, the settings, there's uh, three output settings. So that's minus 12, minus 6, and 0 dB. That's on the, well, that's on the uh, the receiver part. Now, uh, kind of at the volume that I'm talking here, now there'll be no audio corrections in post-production, uh, for this part at least. Um, I've got the, the road set to minus 6, and I'm actually filming on the Sony A6400, uh, and that sort of mic input level is set to 2. So which is quite low, um, but I can see on the uh, audio signal sort of input indicator that it is giving me quite a good signal. Um, so that is quite a, quite a nice feature that you, you get a decent signal out of these little things, uh, especially for some of the mirrorless uh, or the cheaper cameras that don't have 
really good pre-amplifiers um, in them. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Frequency range for the transmitter, and now that's for the internal mic, is 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Not too bad. And uh, if you use an external lav, then it ranges from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now, of course, that will depend on your lav mic, uh, but this is also one of the Rode, this is the Rode Smart Lav Plus that I'm using, and uh, that should pick up 20 to 20. Each one of these things, the transmitter and receiver, are only 31 grams each, so really, really light. Uh, if you compare that, maybe you've ever used that uh, Rode Filmmaker or the Rode Link Filmmaker kit, um, those little units, they are quite small. They are actually probably as big as this. Now, this is my cell phone case, and here is the Rode Video Go, or the Rode Wireless Go, should I say. Um, so quite a lot smaller and quite a lot lighter. Um, that is cool. It's, it's a very nice accessory to have, um, or, or feature, I suppose, the design, uh, because cameras, especially the mirror mirrorless cameras, are getting really small nowadays. And uh, to clip this onto a mirrorless camera, it just it really hides away um, compared to having that big link system on there. Some other little small features, they uh, pair within about three seconds. And uh, if you are worried about using multiple kind of uh, transmitters and receivers, uh, in one area you can use up to eight of these in one area and the receiver or between the receiver and the transmitter they actually just sort themselves out um, they don't kind of interchange uh, or, or interfere with each other uh, i don't actually have a cold shoe here but uh, well here's a basically a little wireless i think this is the rode uh, wireless oh jeez no man the rode video micro now that's quite a small little mic and it's also got a cold shoe so uh, one of the really, really nice things about this wireless go system is that it's got this little clip. And I mean, you can see the little clip over there. This little clip is designed so that it can fit or slide straight into your cold shoe on the camera. That is really awesome. Um, so you don't have to worry about mounting it or, or anything, especially compared to the um, video link system or that wireless, the Rode wireless link system. Um, again, that also went into the cold shoe, but a really big system on top of the camera. What about the price of these things? So uh, I'm in South Africa and they aren't actually commercially available in South Africa yet. However, I bought my two systems. Uh, one of them I imported from Australia and the other, well, uh, the system, the, actually the system that I'm using now, um, I got off or I ordered it off Amazon. Took about five days to get here and uh, the price was uh, in the region of 3,800 to 4,400 Rand. Um, that's, I don't know what that is in dollars, um, but uh, you know, Google will know. So a little bit expensive, not, uh, you know, not break the bank type of thing, but compared to the, um, the Roadlink Filmmaker kit, that is about between six and a half and seven and a half thousand Rand here in South Africa. So these are quite a lot cheaper. Um, and that makes them uh, more, well, when they get here, it makes them more accessible um, to, well, to the hobbyist, I suppose. As for my experience uh, using this wireless kit so far, I haven't actually used it properly yet. This is actually the first video that I'm using the system. Um, now, I did a little bit of testing outside. Uh, I had another mate of mine hold the camera and I kind of walked away. Now, Rode claim that this can go up to 70 odd meters or it's about 230 feet. Uh, that's the range. Um, I, that's in unobstructed clear line of sight. Now, we did some testing um, here uh, from a double story down to, down, to, uh, down to the ground. Well, and, and I kind of walked away a little bit. And my diagnosis was because we were kind of standing in the corner of the building and, uh, you know, the sun was quite uh, high overhead. It was a slight northwesterly breeze. Uh, you know, 24 degrees outside, we only got about 25 meters. So uh, none of that really mattered. <laughs> um, road claims 70 meters and I have seen a couple of reviews and guys say that they, um, that they do get roughly 70 meters. But I was only able to go 25 meters uh, line of sight between these two with a solid connection. Uh, as soon as uh, my mate uh, Seth, he turned around, so we had the one unit over here and uh, the receiver was over here. And when his body was in front of the receiver, then uh, we started having breakups. Now, that was only at 25 meters. That is really close. Um, hopefully, it wasn't a problem with, well, it wasn't these, it was this one. Um, hopefully, it wasn't a problem specifically with this unit, but uh, a lot of other people are reporting very good range. 
Although I think this is designed more for this kind of short, close distance, small area type of filming. Uh, if you need something longer, then maybe go with the, the I keep on forgetting the name, the Rode Link Filmmaker Kit. Uh, that you get quite a bit more distance out of that. And if you need you know, much more, then you're going to have to go for kind of one of the, the more professional uh, Rode products or, or another brand. So uh, really nice overall. They are very small. There is another uh, competitor. Sennheiser also make uh, kind of a rival to this. It's uh, just a small transmitter and receiver, although I preferred Rode stuff over the years, so I decided to stick with Rode. I think they are relatively uh, comparably priced. Um, the Sennheisers also aren't available in South Africa yet. These are pretty new products that have only been on the market for about four to six months. One thing that you are going to need if you want to use this with a lav mic, uh, now this is the lav mic with a TRS, a TRRS connection actually. Um, the reason I bought these is because I used to record my audio kind of on a iPhone. Um, <laughs> just plugged it into the bottom and used to separately record the audio. Now that worked really well um, and I have three of these smart lavs. They have got TRRS connectors on. Now, this input uses a TRS connector, three and a half mil. So what you are going to need is one of these. Now, this is Rhodes uh, SC3. Uh, it's a, a TRRS to TRS connector. Uh, we can also open this guy up. So this box is a bit mashed up, but uh, not that it matters because all that is in here is a very small cable. So uh, what we want to do, now I've got a spare one of my others, uh, this is the SmartLav Plus and it's got the TRRS connection on it. Um, so you're going to have to use the SE3 adapter and you can kind of plug that in there. And then on the, uh, on the transmitter, then you'll have to use that little setup. So that is currently what I'm using at the moment. Um, seems to be working really well. In the past, I actually quite enjoyed it uh, when I used the uh, Rode Video Micro. Now this thing has just got a little TRS uh, connector, jack plug, and you plug this directly into the camera. Uh, there's no batteries, there's no on or switch, there's nothing like that. So when you power your camera on and you hit record, it records audio. The audio from this thing is really, really good. I'm super happy with it, but especially working in the garage or when you, uh, you know, working over here, or when you're walking a little bit away from the camera, um, then your audio kind of gets very distant and I didn't want that. So hence I've gone with the system. Although <laughs> I did an interview a few days ago and uh, what I ended up doing was forgetting to put the system on, which meant these lav mics did absolutely nothing. Thank goodness that I had this microphone plugged directly into the camera so that we could still kind of salvage the, uh, the interview. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to make a little uh, unit or, or you actually can buy these little um, cables, but I want to be able to plug two microphones into one camera. So you can do that using a little breakout connector. Now, this is just a, I think they call it a stereo breakout connector. Um, but basically what it is, is uh, it's a TRS connector. Uh, you've got a tip ring and a sleeve and the sleeve is the common and then the ring and the tip is either the left and the right uh, microphone input. Uh, and then the breakout connector has got two little sort of uh, three and a half mole jack plugs uh, where you know, your normal plug can plug in. Uh, so the common goes to, well, each one of these, and then you've got the tip going to one and the sleeve going to another one. So we can plug two microphones into one camera, record one microphone on one channel, the left channel, and one microphone on the right channel. Um, and that provides a little bit of a backup. Also in an interview situation, uh, when you've got two people marked up, it's quite nice to be able to set the various uh, levels. Maybe the one person next to you is talking louder or softer than what you are, and you can kind of bring them up or down to your same level. So come back for the next video. We are going to look at how to make one of these little uh, adapters. Uh, now you can buy them. It's called a stereo breakout adapter, as far as I understand. Um, you can buy them, but uh, for those of you who want to make them, I'll show you right here. So guys, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. It really does help me. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, I'll tell you what, hit the thumbs down button twice. 
Um, if you've got any comments, leave them in the comments section below. I always like to hear from you. And uh, until next time, keep safe. Cheers. Oh, <laughs>